Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elliott, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Um, thank you for supporting our show, you guys. Go to GrahamElwood.com, sign up for the newsletter. Support us at Patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. Uh, you get bonus content. You get access to the audio podcast. There is no Political Vigilante audio podcast available anywhere except Patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and the Rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood Premium and you're supporting our show and independent media, and you're not letting the big tech win. Well, Joe Biden is getting crushed in the polls. His, his base, which is 18 to 34 year old voters are vehemently against him because the majority of that age group is against supporting Israel's genocide. So Joe Biden going into his bag of tricks was like, man, Remember when we said student loan forgiveness would be too hard and we could only give you 10 grand and, oh, it's too difficult. Where are we going to pay for it? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, bing, bang. Suddenly we figured it out. Look at this. All of a sudden, Joe Biden uh, races to enact new student loan forgiveness plan ahead of November. Well, look at this. Look at this. Biden administration of Finals Monday unveiled the details of a new plan to forgive student loan debt, suggesting that millions of Americans could start seeing debt relief as soon as this fall. It better happen before November, Jack Wagons. The set of new proposals, which CNN reported on Friday, have yet to be finalized. It's President Joe Biden's second attempt to implement broad student loan forgiveness after his first plan was struck down by the Supreme Court last summer. The president traveled to Wisconsin on Monday, a key swing state this November, to announce the plan. While our college degree is still a ticket to, to the middle class, that ticket's becoming much too expensive, Biden said, and then forgot where he was and probably tripped and fell and anything else. Um, the well, I can't read his speech. It's so dumb. The new policies, when combined with the more narrow actions already taken by the Biden administration to cancel student debt, would benefit more than 30 million Americans according to a fact sheet provided by the White House. Well, the White House is going to give you the straight dope. That means that nearly 70% of all federal student loan borrowers could see their debt reduced or fully canceled. That's how you get reelected, dummy. Um, something we said you should have done from the jump. Um, and it, blah, 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 blah. So to discuss this, because it's a subject we have talked about numerous times on this show, and he talked about it on his own show, Get Your News On with Ron, which he doesn't do anymore, but now he's the host of the Thousand Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Ron Placone. What's up, Graham? There it is. Another another solid. I Man, if, if this does go through, I will take the win. Um, sure. even though obviously it's, it's just to get reelected. Um, I have a feeling this won't go through and, and he's going to say, Oh, see, I tried. And, yeah, some and uh, the Republicans, it. He'll, he, if it doesn't go through, if the Supreme court knocks it down again and goes, see, this is why it's more important than ever to vote Democrat. So we can retake the blah, 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 blah. Like that's, that was in that dumb Yahoo article. That's basically what they said. I mean, that's, that'll, that's their plan. Either I would love it if he passed this because it would give a lot of relief to millions of people. And it's something right. this government should do, can do, has the money to do. This government prints money so it doesn't need taxes. Taxation is theft. It prints money and then sends it to wars and Wall Street bailouts. And it doesn't even help its own citizens. So if it did, did if this old degenerate, um, Alzheimer brain addled jackass make something positive that actually benefits Americans lives. I'm all for it, but it won't. He'll try to do it. And then they'll do the old Democrat. We blame the Republicans and, and then they'll go, that's why you have to vote for us. Cause we're the last hope for democracy. No, you clowns have subjugated democracy. You did it eight years under Obama. You did it fucking Bill Clinton, you know, repealed Glass Steagall in his last four months in office. Yeah, and, and just to remind everybody, because this is a point of contention and it has been debated. But to be abundantly clear, yes, Joe Biden can cancel student loan debt with the stroke of a pen. Yes, it's in the Higher Education Act. Oh well, no, the Supreme Court. No, 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 the Supreme Court didn't rule on that part. They ruled on a different part. He didn't try that way. He tried a different way. If he tried it this way, would the Supreme Court try to fight it? Probably. Yeah, of course there'd be some resistance. But he does have the authority via that act to forgive that debt. 
He has not tried that at all. So to, so to say the Supreme Court struck that down is false. Go back, read the act, look at the points that people are actually pointing to. That's not what he tried. He tried a, a convoluted way that everyone knew was going to get struck down. That's what he tried. Right. Everyone knew, like, why is he doing that? That's BS. And, of course, they struck it down. So, you know, if he really wanted to do this, a stroke of a pen cancels. People argue that. They'll they'll say, oh, no, that's not true. You're so stupid. The Supreme Court. No, people will point to the freaking act. They'll be like, this is the authority he has. He didn't try this. Yeah. So, yes, he freaking can. Yes, he can. There's probably people in the comments right now disputing that. Look up the act. Look up that segment about the power that a president has to forgive all higher education loans in that space. Yes, he has it. No, he hasn't tried it. Yeah, it's 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 he hasn't tried it. And this is like why people make excuses. And then there's the other people like you shouldn't have to get a free you should have to pay for cost. Like it's so dumb. That argument is dumb. The so right wing argument is stupid. This country is so stupid on so many levels. It's such a moron factory. Like the people that defend Biden for not being a good leader. And he could, like you said, he could do this with the stroke of a pen. And then the dummies that are like, I should, oh, I didn't get my free college. You kids today get everything for free. Yeah. When you went to college, it was two grand a year, not 60 grand a year. Like, right. What what debts did you have going to college in the 70s? Like, come on. I went to college. It was eight grand a year. That was out-of-state tuition. $32,000 for a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. That's affordable. That's affordable. And again, I don't want to hear it. You, if, when people say, why should we get it for free? Because this country is a monetary sovereign. When Nixon took us off the gold standard, it gave us the ability to print money, which is what we do, which means we don't even need to collect taxes. Taxes are theft. So once you get your dumb, fat American head, be it a woke liberal head or a stupid right wing head out of your dumb, fat ass, because if you're an American, you probably have a fat fucking ass and learn how this stupid country works, then you would realize that we should get free everything because we have the money to do whatever the fuck we want. And why are we giving money to Ukraine and Israel when we don't even have free college? You know who has free health care? Israelis have free health care. Yeah, we don't have free health care. Yeah. They have free college as well. But why don't we? It's amazing to me. So this country is dumb. Uh, the Democrats will will play their stupid base. They'll say, we're fighting for you. And dummy Democrats at the last minute will go, well, we, I got to vote for Biden. He tried to get me free college. I don't know how anything works, but I heard Rachel Maddow and Deborah Messing say something stupid. So I'm such a fucking idiot that I'm going to wave my rainbow flag because I don't like the right wing Republicans. And right wing Republicans are fucking dipshits. They're such dipshits. But you know, this is America, you know, land of the free, home of the stupid. I have no objections. Uh, I'm on board. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's absolutely amazing. And, and I, I do hope that we're both wrong on this and, and this goes somewhere. But I, yeah. I just don't. I mean, he's been dangling that carrot so much and now he's dangling it because of November. And. You know, it's just so absolute. I mean, it, it would be a, a winner forever. And keep in mind, most of the student loan debt is just held by the federal government. Yes, most of it. The the this the stuff that's held privately is a small percentage. Now that small percentage is some really really powerful people that doesn't want Joe Biden or any president to do that. That's part. That's right. the big reason why they don't. But I mean. The government could also just make them whole. They could also, I think it's like 92% and 8%. They could also just make that 8% whole. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's a choice. And, and if he did that, if Joe Biden just wiped out student loan debt, he would win in a landslide. In a landslide. Um, but, you know, Wall Street runs things and they don't want to give up that 8%. And also, you know, if, if you want to got, dive deeper into all this, um, how does an empire work effectively? You have a desperate populace. 
Yeah. A desperate populace is one that's in debt. Yes. Not one that's doing well. So, yes. you know. Thank you, Alex Dasleby. FDR helped Americans because uh, it was both right and necessary. Re-elected to death. Now elites only throw breadcrumbs just before the election if their poll numbers are down. Alex, yep. so accurate, my friend. Shave your knuckles for justice. Thank you for supporting our show. Um, yeah, America is like, they'll keep falling for it. They'll keep falling for it. Americans What's will it? keep falling for it. Is I, a... I, I just say this real quick. I totally understand why um, George Carlin became so cynical and didn't like human beings towards the end of his life because he kept watching them fall for the same crap over and over. Like you can blame the ruling elites all you want, which is, which we, you should do. They're the main ones. But at some point you have to wake up to this. To the, the scam. Dude, you, you, I hear him in my head every day when he's like, they got you by the balls. Yeah. They're coming after your social security dollars. They're going to get it. They're going to get all of it. They're, they're like, they want people just smart enough to push the paper, but just dumb enough to not notice the red, white, and blue dick fucking them in the ass. I mean, dude, he and, and people were walking out of his shows. So he didn't give a fuck. He said, put me in a smaller room or fire me. There yeah. is a guy who went down kicking and screaming yeah. that's a freaking comic that's it, it, that when i hear people go like well it, it wasn't as punchy towards the end but i'm like fuck you because he was fuck done all the way off yeah he was done he had nothing to prove like uh anyway i don't want to get on like a, a a big side comedy bar but i i was gonna mention isn't it amazing that over the past couple years, our Overton window, which, which if anyone like Overton window just means like, like what's the acceptable range of political thought within like the mainstream, our Overton window has gotten worse. It got better for a short period of time. All of a sudden it was Medicare for all climate action, living wages. And that now it's like, Oh, let's uh, you know, let, let's have anti-science RFK, you know, the, the these kind of fringe. But I mean, somebody said I was talking about those three candidates, you know, uh, RFK, Biden, and Trump, and somebody said, "Oh, this is the fringe left." And I'm like, "Isn't it frightening that in the United States, anything to the left of Trump, Biden, and RFK is considered fringe?" Right. In the rest of the civilized world, they would be considered fringe. All three of them. Biden would be considered a fringe right winger anywhere else in the industrialized world. Trump would be off the fucking map. And RFK would just be laughed out of polite society as he should be. I mean, even in this country, he was until recent. All and three of them pro-Israel. Oh, yeah. They're, they're all three imperialists. All three, you know, like like no domestic plans. All three, right. you know, warmongers. All three in bed with Wall Street. All three uh, hostile towards science, hostile towards medicine, hostile towards the arts. All three, by definition, fascist. I, yeah. I mean, it yeah. is it is remarkable. And that is appropriate conversation in the United States. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that the three of them aren't different at all. I'm going to sit here and say that all three of them are not different enough to paraphrase what Jill Stein said in 2016. Yeah, they're not different enough. These are not freaking choices. They got you, as Carlin put it, by the balls. Yeah. And it's like the fact that this is our Overton window. It is beyond. Fr it has gotten worse. It got better for a brief moment. For a brief moment from like 2017 until about 2020 or so, it got better. And then the pandemic just tore the roof off of everything. It has somehow gotten worse. It's yeah. even worse than it was in 2016. Oh, this it's is worse. This, dude, this is the worst it has ever been. We are a right wing fascist country with. Oh, big time. I mean, we are a right wing fascist country. And to hear the right go, oh, the lefties are taking over. It's like. I mean, you know, the, the some of the people in the woke left are out of their fucking minds, but this country is not left wing at all. I don't know what people are talking about. We are we are a 
capitalist country that is out of control with fascists and oligarchs and kleptocrats running the show. And, you know, the, the liberals, you know, try to force their dumb identity politics every once in a while down everybody's throat. And that makes it seem like we're left, but we're not. Lefty would mean we had Medicare for all. We would have student debt forgiveness. We would have free college. We would have an actual functioning infrastructure rather than an infrastructure that is beginning to look more and more like a third world country's infrastructure. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's nuts, but Ron, thank you so much for coming on the show. Tell everybody about, um, before we do that real quick, thank you, Roger, shave your knuckles for justice for supporting our show. Uh, but Ron, tell us all about the screening of your movie left at wall. April yeah. 14th. Sunday, April 14th. Some come see Graham and I, we're both going to be there Sunday, April 14th, uh, flappers comedy club in Burbank. We're going to do a short comedy show. Graham's doing a set. Eddie Pepitone's doing a set. I'm doing a set. Some other members of the cast are doing sets. Then we're going to screen the movie. Uh, it's not a very long movie. It's it's only an hour. So, so it's a shorter feature. And then we're going to have a, a quick Q and a afterwards. People can ask questions about the film. Uh, Graham's hilarious in the movie. Eddie's hilarious. Uh, Dave Anthony, Gareth Reynolds, uh, everybody knocked it out of the park in the film. Sally Mullins, um, Sarah K. Godot, Kimberly Hill. It's a wonderful, wonderful film. I can't wait for more folks to see it. So please, Los Angeles. It has not been distributed digitally yet. So we're doing some screenings first. So Los Angeles, you can see it on April 14th, 5 p.m. Get tickets at romplacone.com. And if you're in Southern California but can't make that, June 8th, we're going to be up in Idlewild. So Idlewild, California, take a fun trip to the mountains on Saturday night. You can get tickets for that at romplacone.com. Ron, it's been so great having you on the show. It's a treat. 